Hi everybody, Julie here. So here we are with part two of our January 2018 challenge, which was to create a winter scene using only pastel colours. Um, the reason I'm doing a part two is even though I set the challenge myself, I forgot that it was a double page, so I've really given myself a hard task. I've compared, um, I didn't have the same shade, so I've had to get all my pastel cardstock out um, and see which one lie best next to the first page. And here I am cutting some snowflakes again out of um, the same paper that I used on the other side, um, and also some white cardstock. Um, at the moment I've chosen the mint green turquoisey colour cardstock um, and I'm using both sides of the paper um, used before. I love the pink on the back of this paper um, and I think it looks lovely against the green. However, for some reason I'm still not happy. I am hard to please, I must admit. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm, I'm just laying them out to, to see one how many I need, have I got the right sizes and thank goodness for my scan and cut, which I use daily, um, along with my Christmas present of a uh, portrait from my husband, which I'm learning to use as well. Um, now, this um, is already not quite right to me. I'm trying to juggle it around, um, which sides it coming from, etc. Um, but I think I need to get the page from the previous uh, part one. Um, and as you can see, that's a very baby pink. It looks darker on the video than it actually is. It's so pale. Um, but next to the green, I think it looks great. Um, but I'm still not happy. There's a peach. Nope, still not happy. Um, so we go back to white and see what happens then. Um, all of a sudden, I'm, yeah, this looks okay. I'm happy with this. Um, obviously, I've made some white cardstock um, snowflakes, so I've got to rectify that. And the way I'm doing that again is with a Christmas present from Hubby. Um, watercolour pens, uh, paintbrushes, and a palette that he bought me. Now, usually... I would be able to paint a sheet and then cut it but obviously um, changing my mind so regularly um, I've basically got to do them individually um, excuse my dog barking in the background so here I'm using a, a pink and I'm channeling it out until it goes into virtually nothing um, and I do several colors to try and bring out um, the pastel shades that were in the instructions for the craft sorry not for the craft for the challenge um, I really like the result and I love these pens I've got to work more with them um, so here I am I just a few other colors I've chosen yellow and I've and also mint green um, and I just spend a little bit of time um, look literally trying to get some definition so they're not just flat snowflakes There we go. Just one more. Yep, they look great. Really happy with them. But obviously, we've got to allow some drying time. But lucky for the video, I don't have to wait for that. So here we are with how our ready painted and dried snowflakes looking really lovely and pastely. And we'll now see what they look like on the page next to the original. So there we are with the green um, from the first choice and I'm placing some matching um, snowflakes to the larger one on page one um, and they do look lovely but I do prefer them on the white. So I'm going to overlap to try and make it look like the page was um, the two pages were made at the same time um, and it's been quite a task I have to say. Uh, don't them um, hand-painted uh, watercolour snowflakes look great I'm so chuffed with them so just laying them out now giving myself an overlap yep they look great swap it over a bit I'm happy really happy with that so basically what I need to do now is I need to stick them down um, but first I need to do what would normally match um, the other side and if you can remember from the first video I used white tissue um, where I placed the white tissue onto a um, a bed of 
gesso or gesso, whichever you want to call it, um, to give me a snow effect. And basically, I am going to do that, but I'm just making sure my snowflakes haven't got any bits and pieces attached that they don't or shouldn't have. So here we go then um, with my white tissue. I'm going to scrunch it up into a tight ball. And then a very thin layer of gesso on the page in the angle that I want it to be because I waste not, want not. So here we go, going from the left top to the right bottom. Very thin layer, just for something for it to adhere to. And it's for some reason it gives a lovely shine through the paper, which I really like, rather than just using glue. So spread it out with that, not too much because you want them crinkles. And just push it down in the centre. That's it. And then if you use a wet paintbrush, just to go round the outside, um, it allows you to pull the tissue away from where it's stuck without too much trouble, giving you a nice rush, sort of a rough edge. Um, yeah, I really like it, and I'll be using this again, I think. So there we go. Pulling it all away. And then I'll use the brush to tidy up all my edges a little bit. It looks so great. I love it. Yeah. I mean, on close-up, you'll actually see the, uh, the, the crinkles. They look so good. It's such a good effect. And then once I've done this, I need to add, as I did on page one, um, some silver glitter, which um, obviously for me represents winter rather than gold. Um, so, yep, just a spray of um, adhesive, a sprinkle of glitter, and then tap it off as best you can. I do rub this in a bit as well because I don't want definite lines or blotches. Um, although a lot of it is going to be covered by the snowflakes. I just turned it over to adhere it some more glitter. Um, as I say, waste not, want not. And here we go now with attaching the snowflakes. I do love that pink one in the, right up in the top. Really like it. And it was a last minute thing to add that bit of blue. Um, so yes, I'm really chuffed. Looks great. Now, even though I do really love that green, because obviously I used it on page one, I don't want to overload this page um, with the green. I want to stress the other colours. Um, so on the left here, I'm actually, I've had trouble with one of my snowflakes uh, not being cut properly. I didn't set the depth as deep as it should have been. So um, just poking those out with my knife. Um, yeah, just moving it around. And yeah, I think that looks good. So then we need to just compare and to line it up so that we can do the overlay. That's it. And then work out which ones I'm going to sort of overlap. And we decide on green. Yep, looks great. Obviously, I really do want the pages to look like uh, they were done together, whether they do at the end. Um, um, <laughs> is anyone's guess at this stage? <laughs> so I just cut the snowflake where it should be stuck, stick it onto the first page, um, and then that can be moved to the side to carry on with page two. Just a bit of tacky glue. And then line it up, having already marked the page where I want it to go. There. looks Actually looks great on its own. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, so now we need to um, attach the other side. Um, so joining the two um, is my main concern, just to make sure that it looks like a single um, piece of work. Um, so I'm twisting it and turning it. I'm trying to get the right... Um, the right angle really and I wanted it to maybe make more of a cluster in the top left hand corner and going on to page one so as um, oh it looks like um, that's flashing I don't know if it is on the on, on the video but as I'm recording it it is um, 
so basically what I'm looking at here is joining up that major snowflake but I am going to carry over some smaller ones as well later on um, but I do think you know once it goes in an album in two pieces of you know your two page protectors I do want to make sure that uh, it looks like a double page so as I say excuse my dog once again um, here we go so now we're going to start adding more of the um, snowflakes in no particular order there we go starting to look really pretty now there we go yeah, I'm really pleased. And didn't that glitter really does make a difference underneath and the tissue, even though um, in the scheme of things it doesn't actually look like it's doing much white on white. It actually really does, um, especially especially in real life, as opposed to being um, on a video. Um, I mean, you've got to take my word for that, obviously. But uh, apologies if you can't see the full screen. Um, I'm right into it now and I, I'm, I start to speed up because I'm getting um, excited. I always do when a page literally unfolds in front of me. Um, I suppose that's why I do scrapbooking. I love it. So now I need to stick all the snowflakes down in their relative places using um, my trusty tacky glue. Um, but once they're stuck down you can't be moved so you've got to be absolutely certain they're where you want them. Um, so there we go with the first one and so on try not to join up two with the same color if possible but uh, with such a small space uh, you can't really help it but the green ones really do link the two pages and the hand painted ones are meant to separate the two pages if that makes sense um, but I am really happy with the results so far only wish I could have had um, two pieces of that basil pale pink cardstock um, and had I not uh, realized that I'd set the challenge as a double page I probably would have used um, white on both pages um, but there you go um, we are um, loving the to be different and it certainly is that really unfolding now um, as each one is stuck down in its permanent place and I'm keeping the other page one next to it um, to try and balance things because um, it's very easy to overload one side if you haven't got the page one in front of you to compare to so I mean I think down on the bottom right there you can actually see the tissue paper in its full glory I love it really does make a good in fact I'd love to do a whole page in it I think that's a, a project waiting to happen Okay, so just a couple more um, before I decide that's it. Um, one in that bottom right-hand corner. There we go. And if you're wondering who that little friend is in the top left, um, that's from my daughter-in-law-to-be. Um, and it's Tigger. And he's my lucky mascot. And I'm hoping that you'll see him in all my process videos. So there we go. Page two. Now we need to look at photographs. What we're going to do, where we're going to place them. I've already got it in my head where I'm going to place them. And I have, I am sticking with the same theme as page one as in the background papers, the layering um, I don't want it to be identical, but I certainly do want some kind of um, link between the two. So if you remember rightly, we had the blue, we also had a pink, um, we had the Maggie Holmes gorgeous paper, um, and I use that so much. I, I don't know how many sheets I've got left, but not much, I don't think. So first of all, we're going to back the photo um, with the blue. Um, so there, there's my size, my six by four ish. Just to, am I going to put it there? Am I not? I think I decide that uh, we'll get some layering done first. And there it is, my Maggie Holmes. I love it. Um, it works on so many pages because of the um, the way she's mixed the colours up. Really lovely. 
Um, so I'm just going to use a small piece to go in the back and set, offset it with the blue. And then I'm going to add some pink. Now this is like a peach with um, spots. Now when I used this on the other page, it literally brought to life the Maggie Holmes paper because I'd used a really pale area um, of the paper. Um, and when I put the peach on, it literally brought it to life. So I'm hoping that it's going to do the same. So there we go. Pink, Maggie Holmes and blue starting to look very much like I want it. Now I need the, the peach. But only this small piece. Um, I've actually started using um, quite a lot of spotty papers recently. I don't know whether it's just me having a phase. Um, but yes, I've got, I've seem to have collected quite a few. So I might, may have to do a spotty page soon. Um, maybe spots and stripes or something like that. Because um, I do love them, especially the navy ones. Right, so here we are. I'm going to set it at the, the bottom corner. Fiddling around which, which way does it look best. I think it looks better with not a lot showing, but enough to give it that oomph. Um, so once I've got it where I want it to go, I'm going to put a bit of tape on to hold it. My trusty double-sided. There we go. Bang smack in the centre. And that is the only one that is in the centre as well. <laughs> And when you see the other page side by side, you'll see um, where I've come from, why I'm doing it like this. Um, you'll see that soon. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tacky glue down one side just to give that definition. Not sure where I want it. Do I want it at the bottom? I think I do. So there we go. I, I want it left justified, really. Um, as I say, you'll see why when the two pages go together. There we go. That's where I want it. It's a fiddly little corner, this one. It's got to be right. If it's not right, then it could ruin the whole layout, making one side too heavy. There we go. So here we are, they're nearly done. All I'm going to do now is um, basically choose the photos, which I already have. I've already worked out the framing. And there we go. Now I'm just going to work out the positioning. I like it there, but it's a bit top heavy. So compare it to the other page. And at that point I decide to go central simply because I've got plans to do some more work in that top area so I mark where it's going for future reference and here's my photograph my glorious Leo um, there is a bit of a glare on the uh, gloss photos um, unfortunately because I am doing this at night so I've got my lights on so unfortunately it does glare on the photograph look at him he's so cute i think by the time he's 18 <laughs> i'm gonna be literally buried with albums of leo which is going to be lovely for him to look back on when he's older so now we just need to back the photograph and in this gorgeous pink now I, I do this probably back to front to everybody else but I always put my tape on the photograph before I cut and I don't use a, a paper trimmer as I've mentioned previously because I just love my craft knife and I feel that I get a lot more um, accuracy with the craft knife than I do with the trimmer I've got about four that I've bought and never got on with them so I let my daughter use them my little daughter who loves scrapbooking as well Nevaeh 
Okay, so now I've brought in the second photo um, and I've got some oddments of uh, play foam. I'm going to stick that on the back to give the definition and lift it up off the page. Um, and also I've left um, a space at the top because I've got something that I want to tuck in there. I've also brought in um, the title which goes along with the other page which was Joy 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 and it continues. There we go. Now, am I going to put them straight? Am I going to have them offset? See that glare? It's awful. I'll have to work on that for the next video. Okay, so that, see how that pink in that background and on the um, Maggie Holmes paper brings out um, the water paint at the top, you see? I really like that. So there we are, the two, side by side. Um, and you can see now why I chose not to put it in that top right hand corner because um, I do think it would have been way top heavy and I really like the way that looks just as it is I love black and white photos so that's it, I know where it's going put some foam oddments on the back stick it all down and we're on our final bits and pieces now There we go, stick it down. Fabulous. Now this is the second photo and again I'm using a pale blue um, frame. Just a little bit of glue around the outside. Again, this is to marry up with what's on the other page. Such a jolly little photo. All wrapped up, all nice and snug. I was actually going to title this page Snug as a Bug in a Rug because um, it's something that uh, I used to say as a child or my parents used to say. Um, however, I thought... I might be the only one who ever uses that and everyone's going to think I'm nuts. <laughs> so <laughs> I decided not to. So I'm placing it to sort of marry up with the other side. As you can see, um, on the other side you've got um, pink. Um, and at this stage I realise that um, it's a little bit offset. So I need to add something. I'm trying to work out what it is I need to add. And then realise, actually... I need some pink on here. Um, it does look nice without, but it looks better with. And I've also put play. Um, it's not stuck down or anything. It's just sitting there ready uh, to match with the love. And here comes the pink. It just lifts it so much. I love it. And these literally are from my scrap box, all these bits and pieces. This is um, the back of some, um, not thickers, I think it was, I can't remember, it might be the lace actually, the different coloured lace um, had a, a pink backing. I don't throw anything away, I'm a bit of a hoarder. Um, so I'm putting the lace, sticky lace, onto the pink which is like a gloss card and I really think it looks pretty I didn't want to make the page look too frilly because obviously he's a little boy but um, me being a girl there's got to be some elements of girly always get me a little bit of bling in and a little bit of lace really taking shape now isn't it love it so just going to place the pink i'm just deciding whether to have it over the top or underneath there we go a few little stickers i put snapshots there i've taken away the play and you'll see that moved and at the moment i'm placing the tiniest of colored beads 
with a clear glue on that odd bit of card there just to marry it in I've also got some um, like diamante stars the same as the other side there we go snapshots this is where I fiddle around add things take things away um, you'll see things coming in and going. It's because I haven't quite made up my mind where it's going. Um, I'm quite an indecisive crafter, to be honest, which is why making um, process videos is so difficult because sometimes I can take days over a layout because I never start a layout with um, a definite plan. I don't think anyone does, really. Um, all I know is uh, either the photo that I want to use or the paper that I want to use and and that's as far as it goes obviously if I've set a challenge like this one then um, that's sort of that decisions already made for me now here I'm um, using some chiffon ribbon in the same color um, and that lovely pink snowflake to add to a tag where I'm going to put my journaling um, I don't really like journaling um, to be read by the world um, because sometimes it can be quite personal um, so I normally do my journaling on tags if you've ever worried you know, not, uh, wondered where it is um, it's either on the back of the cardstock itself or on, um, on a tag um, sometimes I really can write a lot uh, so I think it would ruin the page to put too much on. I know some crafters do, um, and that suits their style. It just doesn't suit mine. I, f I prefer my page to sing about the photo. Now here I'm doing some um, grouping of embellishments to give some height, definition, and obviously some interest. So I'm layering... Um, three things I think here um, which I think works really well there so I'm just putting it on some foam pads just to lift it and again it gives that lovely height and shadowing on the pictures so I'm going to pop another foam pad behind the photograph now holds everything into place There we go. And I've put Joy on the right hand side. I think it looks good there rather than the top right hand side. Now these are um, little puffy stickers that um, I can't remember where I got them from now. Um, I haven't actually used them before but the colours were perfect. I didn't want too many but I just wanted something with a, a bit of height um, that was the right colour. And here we are, my page complete thoroughly enjoyed this one and it would be really great if as many of you as possible could join in the challenge thanks ever so much for watching my video